I talked about this on stream, but I want to talk about it again in this video, because this might be a very insightful topic for a lot of you guys, especially with Death Stranding being on the crosshairs of... Um... Aces? Before you get to this video, YouTube will demonetize it because I will talk about war and politics. So if you'd like to support my work, you can do so by checking the links down below. Also, huge thanks to a big fan of you all and Anon for the donations and pledges. You guys are fantastic. If you guys missed it, Death Stranding is the new intense delivery simulator game made by Hideo Kojima. I find it interesting that this game never hits the middle ground. You either love this game or you hate this game. I'm gonna talk about this game in more detail in my future on cap review, but for now I just want to talk about this article specifically from Game Revolution because it tackles the topic of video games and politics. Something that I've tackled like a million times on this channel already. From the title, we're already seeing something wrong with the article. The article assume that people are saying that Japanese video games are less political than Western ones. I don't think anyone is saying that. I think what people are saying is that Western video games are more on the nose with their politics compared to Japanese video games. But that's just an overgeneralization. I think we should dive into a little bit more detail. And this is where you guys are going to learn something very interesting. Politics in video games have existed for a very long time and this article is going to bring a lot of examples, including ones that I didn't expect to be used for a discussion of politics in video games. But the thing that differentiates each and every game that tackles politics is whether or not they talk about ideas, events, or people. I define ideas as an abstract concept, whereas I refer to events and people as actual real-life events and people. So is the game talking about abstract ideas, or is it referring to real-life events or people? In this article, the writer talks about how Kojima mentioned Trump and Brexit as one of the influences to develop Death Stranding, which I can totally see why, because one of the game's plot point is an America that is divided, an America consisting of people who refuse to connect to each other thanks to Death Stranding. The game is about you as a delivery man trying to connect each and every part of America to rebuild the society and make America great you can finish that one yourself. Point is, Death Stranding explored the ideas of a divided America, but they're not divided thanks to the toxicity of social media and how differences of opinions can make people ridiculously hostile towards each other. Instead, they're divided by a metaphor for it, as in the Death Stranding event, which I think is a representation of the irony of social media, something that's supposed to connect us only ended up separating us even further. In a world like this, it makes sense why the delivery guys are the most sacred jobs to have because they're the ones who are willing to connect one part of the world to another and they're the ones who are willing to take the risk of going through the hostile environment. If only there was someone like that in real life. It's really weird that I got all of these ideas and interpretations storming through my head, even though I'm not much of a fan of Kojima. I love Metal Gear Solid 3, it's one of my favorite games on a PS2, but I still think Kojima is a mixed bag. There are many parts of his writing that I just don't like. I can, however, definitively say that Kojima is excellent at exploring ideas. Kojima is not the type of person who likes to use his video games to talk about specific events or people. Sometimes he does, but for the most part, he always talks about the concept instead of the actual real world happening, and he tries to integrate those concepts and ideas within his fictional universe. Death Stranding is a game that talks more about the idea of a divided America. If the game is talking about events or people, it would have referenced all of the things that happen in current year America, but no, it's more interested in talking about ideas. Now let's get back to the article, because the writer highlighted examples of Japanese games, such as Kojima's own Metal Gear franchise. The writer talks about how Metal Gear Solid 2, for example, revolves around the intersection of overbearing governments and being able to control the media. The series has tackled nearly every issue related to war, ranging from soldiers not having a place in society after returning from deployment, to the cycle that weapon manufacturers feed into. Correct. But then you misstepped in the summary. To act as if Kojima is not one of the most political game creators is incredibly naive and just plain incorrect. 
The difference is that for the most part, Kojima is talking about ideas. Kojima is not using those games to make a political statement against specific people or specific events. Kojima is using those games to tackle those ideas and incorporating them to a fictional universe. Not only that, but Kojima leaves a lot to the interpretation. He's allowing his audiences to actually interpret what it means and what these specific events are meant to be a parallel of. Anyway, the writer bizarrely picked Persona 5 as the next target for a game that has political elements. Um, not really. I don't think Persona tackles anything that's as political as Metal Gear, except if you count Shido, which is just an evil politician. But the writer goes even further by saying that Shido is a direct comparison to Shinzo Abe, and that the game takes shot at the ultra-nationalist ideals that the Nippon Kaigi have pushed for in Japan. Okay, first off, citation needed, and second, Shido isn't really supposed to represent Shinzo Abe, or any other politician for that matter, he can be used as a comparison, as a parallel to Shinzo Abe, the same way Kamoshida can be used as a comparison to the Me Too suspects, but they're really not. Shido and Kamoshida, and many of Persona 5's villains, are supposed to represent ideas. The game is about society suppression through the people who are abusing their power and influence, and those two figures represented the ways in how society can be oppressed by people who are abusing their power and influence. Those two characters characters represent the idea of a corrupt politician and the idea of a sexually abusive teacher, respectively. They're not referring to specific people or events. They can be inferred to referring to specific people or events, but on the game's surface level, they're really not. And that's the key difference between stories that talk about ideas and stories that talk about events or people. There's a scene in Life is Strange 2 where a character named Hank is capturing the two main protagonists, who are Hispanic. He captured them because he suspected them of shoplifting, an action that, bizarrely, you have the choice to do. So when he said this iconic line, You're the reason we need to build that wall. Isn't shoplifting kind of proves his point? And you'll get to that scene even if you didn't shoplift. It is such a confusing scene. In before, people spamming, Actually, the character is talking about walls running the gas station store that he has. Yeah, sure he does. Sure he freaking does. Anyway, Life is Strange 2 is talking about people. It's using a character as a representation of a group in real life and not a representation of an idea. Meanwhile, Spec Ops The Line is talking about the ideas of war crimes. It's not taking a specific event and modifying it to fit a certain agenda, not mentioning any names. Stories need to tackle ideas, not people, not events, ideas. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with making your game to be about specific historical events or specific people, but when you go to the route of representing historical people or events in a fictional entertainment where it's supposed to entertain you, you're going to run the risk of people saying that you're not representing them correctly. Ideas, however, are more abstract in nature, which is open to a lot more interpretation and parallels that can be driven out of them. The examples that the writer gives, such as Metal Gear Solid or Persona 5, are games that explore ideas. They're not there to make a political statement against specific people or events. They are there to tackle certain ideas. The writer then goes on to talk about Yakuza and Judgment, which, again, are also talking about ideas of corrupt policemen in a fictional story, in a not-so-fictional setting. This is where things get really baffling to me. The writer goes on to talk about Ubisoft games like Far Cry 5, which is very confusing because Far Cry 5 did have a scathing examination of cults and Midwestern isolation. It's just that it didn't talk about specific events or people. It uses those ideas and incorporate them into a fictional storyline. The same can be said to Division 2 and Watch Dogs Legion. These two explore the ideas of a decaying civilization thanks to either civil war or a post-Brexit London, without the needs of taking jabs to Boris Johnson's hair or something. And this is where we get to the most important statement that a lot of people woefully misunderstood. When game developers like Ubisoft say their games are apolitical, what they mean is that these games aren't making any political statements towards specific events 
or people. They say it so that they don't alienate their player base. They do that by making garbage games and putting microtransactions in it. It's bizarre that you criticize Ubisoft games for not making a stance, when the previous Japanese games that you cited aren't making any stances as well. I don't think Persona 5 is blatantly stating that Shinzo Abe is bad. They're stating that corrupt politicians are bad. It was you who drew parallel between that to Shinzo Abe, but you didn't give any citation to why you would. But for some reason, you don't give the Ubisoft games the same courtesy. You're not drawing parallels of the cult with Trump supporters or something where those parallels can be made the same way the parallel between Shido and Shinzo Abe can be made. I can make the parallel to Life is Strange 2's Hank because he literally said, you're the reason we should build that wall. I don't think the game even established that Trump is a thing in the universe. It's only something that exists within our real world universe. But then we get to the next example that baffles me even more. The writer then cited the Outer Worlds and how Obsidian said that the game was an overtly political. And they're right, the game isn't really making a statement against specific people or events. It's just tackling the idea of an ultra-capitalist society being controlled by corporations in a fictional universe where those ideas can be tackled. But that's not the most bizarre part. The most bizarre part is this. So either way, the game is conveying how evil corporations can be and how capitalism can ruin societies, yet Obsidian was afraid to plainly state or hint at that notion, despite it being pretty clear. Writer, if a game is very clear on conveying its message, they don't have to plainly state or hint it. The game is very clear about the message through the universe that it is showing. They don't have to go to you, knock your head many times and say, hello, corporation's bad. We're living in a strange time where Hideo Kojima is making games that are more subtle than what this writer is asking for. We're living in a time where people are so dumb that they're unable to grasp new ones. These things have to be plainly stated to them to their face so that they can go, ooh, now I get it. It's criticisms like this that ruins video games. It's criticisms like this that creates bad video games. You're encouraging game developers to be even less subtle to the point where Kojima is looking at that and say, okay, hold up, that's way too on the nose for me. Here's an incredibly interesting update that I just found out as I'm editing this video. Kojima's Death Stranding has stronger criticism in the US. Now, Kojima himself stated that this is the type of game that may have been difficult to understand for a certain type of critic and audiences because Americans are great fans of first-person shooters and Death Stranding isn't one. It flies higher. Okay, that's a very pretentious statement, but considering that a lot of Western game journalists need their games to knock their heads so that they can understand the themes, I think he might have a point. So no, Japanese developers aren't creating apolitical games that don't deal with any social justice issues. I don't think anyone ever says that they don't, so congratulations writer on tackling an argument that nobody makes. You're either ignoring them when they address them, or are completely ignorant to the context that surrounds them, since you're probably not reading Japanese world news. Oh wow, Persona 5 is supposed to represent the issues of current year Japan? Thank you, writer, for pointing that one out for me because I clearly couldn't figure it out myself. Also, citation needed. Politics are an inescapable part of art, and while there are politic-free games you can use to escape, most stories will include them as it's a part of everyday life. You know... When people say that all art is political, I think they're misunderstanding the difference between politics and ideas. A picture of a blank sheet of printer paper can convey the ideas of emptiness, loneliness, and being an insignificant pawn with no signs of originality. But does it really convey any political ideas? Does it make a statement towards a specific group of people? I mean, you can make it out to be, but... That would be a stretch, wouldn't it? But that's just the inherent part of politics, isn't it? Politics, at the end of the day, are about relationships between people or groups of people. When people say that all art is political, I think what they meant is that all art can be used as a way to convey political statements. And that's true, but 
there's a big problem when they decided to stretch out that definition. It's not that all of them can be a way to convey political statements, it's that all of them are political statements. It's even more of a problem when they interpret these art as a political statement against them, which happens to both sides of the argument, by the way. No one is immune to this. By the way, have you seen the prevalence of people going muh organs towards artworks of sexy women on Twitter? That's because these people think that a piece of art that is supposed to please people is a political statement against women. It's not just that all art is a political statement, it's that everything is a political statement. At the end of the day, video games are for fun, and tackling political ideas in a video game can be fun. But there's a problem when video games are turned into political statements against specific people or groups. People don't have a problem with games tackling political ideas. They have a problem with games being used as a megaphone to score points. They have a problem with journalists insisting that video games can be and should be used that way. The reason why people love Japanese games more so than Western ones is because they generally explore ideas rather than events or people. It's interesting when a game explores the idea of a divided America. It's not interesting when a game says orange men bad because we clearly haven't had enough of that already.